Mr. Deeds, you haven't yet touched upon the most important point. This rather fantastic idea of yours to want to give away your entire fortune is, to say the least, most uncommon. Oh, yes, yes, I was getting to that, Your Honor. Suppose you were living in a small town and getting along fine, and suddenly somebody dropped 20 million dollars in your lap. Supposing you discovered that all that money was messing up your life, was, was bringing a lot of vultures around your neck and making you lose faith in everybody, you'd be a little worried, wouldn't you? You'd feel that you had a, a, a hot potato in your hand and you'd want to drop it. I guess uh, Dr. Von Haller here would say you were riding on those bottom waves because you wanted to drop something that was burning your fingers. If this man is permitted to carry out his plan, repercussions will be felt that will rot the foundation of an entire governmental system. Please, Mr. Cedar. Proceed. Personally, I don't know what Mr. Cedar's raving about. From what I can see, no matter what system of government we have, there'll always be leaders and always be followers. It's like the road out in front of my house. It's on a steep hill. Every day I watch the cars climbing up. Some go lickety-split up that hill on high, some have to shift in the second, and some sputter and shake and slip back to the bottom again. Same cars, same gasoline, yet some make it and some don't. And I say, the fellows who can make the hill on high should stop once in a while and help those who can't. That's all I'm trying to do with this money, help the fellows who can't make the hill on high. What does Mr. Cedar expect me to do with it? Give it to him and a lot of other people who don't need it? If you don't mind, Your Honor, I'll ride on those top waves for a minute. Hey, all you fellas up there. All those who applied for a farm, stand up. See all those fellas? They're the ones I'm trying to help. They need it. Mr. Cedar and that Mr. Uh, Semple don't need anything. They've got plenty. It's like I'm out in a big boat and I see one fella in a rowboat who's tired of rowing and wants a free ride, and another fellow who's drowning. Who would you expect me to rescue? Mr. Cedar, who's just tired of rowing and wants a free ride, or those men out there who are drowning? Any 10-year-old child will give you the answer to that. All right, fellas, thank you. Sit down. Now, my plan was very simple. I was going to give each family 10 acres, a horse, a cow, and some seed. And if they work the farm for three years, it's theirs. Now, if that's crazy, maybe I ought to be sent to an institution. But I don't think it is. And what's more, Mr. Cedar doesn't either. Just before the hearing started, he offered to call the whole thing off if I made a settlement with him. So you see, he wouldn't think I was crazy if he got paid off. It's a lie! Your horse is easy to in his warped imagination. I never heard anything so colossally stupid in my life. It's an insult to our intelligence to sit here and listen to such childish ravings. Will please permit Mr. Dees to finish? But your honor! Sit down! Anything else, Mr. Deeds? No. Yes. There's just one more thing I'd like to get off my chest before I finish. Proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. He didn't come to order. The court is again in session. Before the court announces its decision, I want to warn all who are here that the police have orders to arrest anyone creating a disturbance. Mr. Deeds, there has been a great deal of damaging testimony against you. Your behavior, to say the least, has been most strange. But in the opinion of the court, you are not only sane, but you're the sanest man that ever walked into this courtroom. Mr. Smith. You nose twitcher. I knew it, I knew it, you.
pixelated. he sure is.